With respect to epigenetic therapies in AML, I gave an educational uh, discussion at the European Hematology uh, Association meeting and my uh, talk focused on three areas. Firstly, the uh, way we use epigenetic therapies in the clinic at the moment, uh, some new epigenetic targets which are emerging in clinical development, and thirdly, some of the challenges we're currently facing in successfully uh, taking epigenetic uh, therapies to the clinic. With respect to current uh, epigenetic, epigenetic therapies, uh, discuss some of the recent data which is uh, uh, showing the role of uh, uh, different schedules of hypomethylating agents such as decidabine given over 10 days, uh, particularly for patients with uh, p53 mutations. Uh, discussed the emergence of second generation uh, hypomethylating agents such as guadacitabine which is currently being examined in a registration uh, study. I also looked at uh, some of the, the newer uh, epigenetic therapies which are emerging into the clinic such as DOT1L inhibitors, uh, bromodomain inhibitors, uh, LSD1 inhibitors and a variety of other drugs. And the common theme with all of these new uh, epigenetic genetic therapies is that uh, we tend to test them in uh, patients with very advanced uh, and progressive AML. And what we know from uh, many uh, streams of basic science literature is that in patients who are relapsing for the third or fourth time, that the genetics and also the epigenetics of their disease is highly complicated, um, causing multiple um, gene-gene and gene-epigenetic interactions, which is really making for a very difficult situation when we're only applying one targeted therapy. So, in the last uh, part of my talk, I discussed uh, uh, the possibility that perhaps we should be testing these drugs much earlier in the piece, and maybe even in remission, uh, with the goal of trying to modify the natural history of stem cells, uh, which is really uh, the current uh, unmet need. And so one way we could do this, for instance, is to use uh, next generation quantitative sequencing approaches uh, and survey the mutational landscape after chemotherapy, and then perhaps introduce uh, these epigenetic therapies which take time to work um, as ways of trying to modify uh, the mutational landscape of clones which have survived therapy. And in Australia, we've, uh, we're starting to develop what's called a, a maintenance platform trial, which will allow us to introduce uh, new therapies uh, in a modular approach uh, and in, in a perpetual study that can hopefully uh, continue and uh, answer some of these questions in the future.